Hey everybody, it's Corey with Ascend Smarter Intervention and I wanted to just jump in this morning because this month we have been talking all about the five core components of literacy on the blog and we're super excited about the five core components of literacy because it really offers this amazing framework that we can follow when we're thinking about our reading instruction. So this is for students who are are typically developing as well as for struggling readers as well. And so if you've missed any of them, we have talked about phonological awareness and we've talked about phonics. So specifically the importance of explicit and direct instruction in phonics using a structured, sequential, cumulative scope and sequence. And so we've linked up our scope and sequence in the blog. So if you missed that, go check it out. It's at smarterintervention.com forward slash blog dash highlights. Um, You can also just go to the website and you can find it from there. But today we wanted to talk about vocabulary and vocabulary is a really interesting one because I think it can be easy for us to skip this or to assume that it's a skill that students have when really they, they don't. And it's really important that we make sure that they understand the words that they're reading for multiple reasons. One, obviously that's going to impact their reading comprehension, but two, it's a really good way for them to be able to self-monitor whether or not they've read a word correctly or not. As we start working through a systematic and structured approach to literacy, what you'll recognize is that students start applying these strategies, they're sounding words out, but then they just keep going. And so one of the biggest problems that we have with Orton-Gillingham approach or this structured systematic approach to literacy is that too often we're not focusing on vocabulary. We're not actually focusing enough on the application or the generalization of these skills. Vocabulary instruction or vocabulary just focus is one of the best ways to start to recognize if students are generalizing and starting to think deeper. What we always tell our students is that when you're reading, there are two things that you need to be able to do. The first thing you need to be able to do is you need to be able to string all your sounds together. You need to know what all of those patterns say, string them together and say the word. The second part you need to be able to do is you need to be able to create a picture or have a definition in your head of what that word is. Those are the two pieces. Just saying the word is not enough. And too often our students get stuck with just that first piece. They're like, yep, I said it. Okay, well, is that a word that you know? Do you have some reference point in your mind for what that is? That is critical. And it's critical when we think about the literacy processing triangle, moving from phonology, the sound structure, to orthography, the visual structure, to semantics, the meaning and the meaning processor. So this vocabulary instruction clearly is super important for that meaning processor at the top of that literacy processing triangle. So after we've talked with students about, hey, there's always two pieces to reading, One of the things that we'll do is we will ask students when they read a word list or they read a sentence or they read a passage to go through and highlight the words that they don't know. The challenge is that this is a skill for students and they have to actually learn how to do this. It requires a lot of metacognitive ability or knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know. Sometimes, sometimes words, students don't even recognize that they don't know a word and they just keep going and they just feel that that's natural. They've been taught to just skip it. Um, And really what we want to do is we want them to stop and pause. And even if they're going to keep reading to see if context won't answer it for them, we need them to recognize that they don't know the word. So we'll have them highlight it. So again, any time that we're doing word lists, we're doing sentences, we're doing passages, we ask students, we give them a highlighter and we say, I need you to highlight any word that you can't define. Sometimes they're pretty good at this and sometimes they're not. And so then what we'll do is we'll challenge them a little bit and we'll make sure that they can put words through a framework. And so the framework that we use for vocabulary is that students need to be able to provide us a category, a function, and a synonym. Those are the things that they need to be able to do for us to know that they really truly understand a word. So for example, if we're thinking about category, we can do this in a couple of different ways. If we have something that's more concrete, like the word puppy, for example, we could put that in the category of animals. A puppy is an animal. Um, And that's what we could do. Sometimes we've got words that are more abstract or more challenging. And those ones, what we may want to do for our category is just simply be able to say, is it a noun? Like, is it a person, place, or a thing? 
Is it a verb? Is it something that we do? Is it an adjective? It's, it's a describing word. And so that's fine too. So sometimes we just need to be able to do that. Clearly, if we can get more granular on those categories, we definitely want to, but sometimes we, we can't, and so we don't always have to. And then sometimes we also um, will just need to say, hey, you know, this is a feeling. This is an emotion. This is anything that's going to work in that same realm. Then we want to move on to function. So then the function is what do we do with it or what is its purpose? So for example, a dog or a puppy, um, we keep it in our house as a pet or a companion. Um, It barks. It, you could say any number of things of what it does or what we do with it, what its function is or what some defining features are. We can add those in to that section. And then the final piece that we want to know is, can you create a synonym? Do you have a word that means the same? If you can come up with a word that means the same or it's kind of like. Sometimes we have feelings or we have things that we don't necessarily have a direct synonym, but we can say it's kind of like this. And that's perfect. So for example, um, a word was slide. And we were thinking slide in the context of this is playground equipment. We use it to go down. We play on it. It's fun. And then it's kind of like a ramp. Okay, and so that's the that's the um, framework that we want students to be able to put that vocabulary word through. So when we are testing them or when we're kind of pushing the limits a little bit to see, hey, did you actually know what that word meant? That's what we're doing. We're going to push them through that framework. So, so critical. And your students will absolutely surprise you um, with the things you think they know that they don't or that they think they know that they don't. And so this is a critical, critical component. Now, obviously, we can take this further. We can start looking at morphology. We can start looking at word structure. We can start looking at prefixes and suffixes and Greek and Latin roots. And all of that is really critical, too. But we don't want to kind of hold that off until the end. And I think previously, that's what I did. I just sort of held that off until the end. And I was like, oh, we'll get there when we start talking about prefixes and suffixes. No, we really need to start building this framework from the very beginning. So we're doing this even with our little littles. We're starting to get them into the habit of if you can't define a word succinctly, you don't know what it is. So you need to be able to give me a category, a function, and a synonym. So we'll be um, linking up our graphic organizer that we use, just free download, on the blog. So you can go check that out. And um, if you have any questions, definitely let us know. I will check comments here, or if you have comments you want to leave on the blog, that's great as well. Check back in next week. We're going to be talking all about fluency and some reading fluency strategies. All right, guys, have a great day. Hope it is amazing and beautiful as it is here in Colorado.